Hi everyone, uh, it's Gareth here again. A uh, bit for any war game mode. Cause you know this because you're on my channel, but there you go. Um, I'm going to do about, about an hour of sitting and painting. Um, I've got a lot of stuff on my desk today. Um, for, re for good reason, because this tank here, which is a pretty big tank, it's called a, it's a Spartan. It's a big tank. Uh, I've been getting pressure from people to get it painted and I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, let's do it. So what I've had to do is take all the bits apart of it so I can paint it. So that's part of it, that's part of it. Uh, these are part of it. That's part of it. They're part of it. These two are part of it. So there's lots lots of bits. Uh, and they're all separate for, different, for reasons. It's just easier to paint in bits. Um... We also have uh, a guy that's not undercoated yet. I've been intending to undercoat him. It's my Mortat for 30k. Um, it's been a bit wet and windy, so I haven't painted. I haven't sprayed him yet. Should do him today. Might do him today. We'll see. Got some bases for my 30k Marines. Some finished bases for my 30k Marines. And we've got my Sakara Battle Tank which is a finished model I'm just using it so I can actually reference where I need to put colours and stuff bag of shoulder pads for my world ears um, I've got five tactical marines that, are the, that guy to that guy those guys there three more rampagers who I spent time painting two of them last week uh, I've got all my all my Death Guard stuff. So I've got six Pox Walkers, the six Plague, Plague Marines, and I got this guy out of a, a case. He's, uh, I can't remember what he's called, but he's basically, I, I, it was a model that I tested how to paint rust on uh, a while ago now. I didn't finish him, uh, and now I might strip him to go with my uh, Death Guard, but we'll see. That's probably going to be next year but at the moment I haven't got a case to put them in so they're just sitting there talking to me telling me to paint them um, but what we're going to be mostly painting today is this Spartan um, and it's going to be in bits and pieces random different colours because that's how I paint it uh, I've just finished shading it so I'm waiting for the shades to dry um, as you can see this is this was all sprayed white it's now like a, a a bluey grey and that's how I do my world eaters um, so that can go there because that's not going to get touched for, for a little while I don't think this is its engine engine block um, yeah painted blue uh, backpacks for the tactical marines which can go there uh, these are the exhausts they go under the engine block I've got two of them uh, this is the heavy bolter, which goes into that slot there. It's just easier to have it separate. So, we've got the doors that go on the sides, and we've got the two last cannons, like uh, quad last cannons that go on the sides as well. But what, we're gonna, what I'm going to start with today is, uh, I've already done the blue. The cancel blue is down, uh, which I found I'm actually running really low off, so I'm, I've had to scrounge bits out of pots they're practically empty so I've got to get some more of them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the gold on the two doors um, for that I'm using Socrox bronze yep um, which is a bit of a weird way to paint gold but it's my way of painting gold and I like it so that's what I'm going to do and it's it's a quick and easy way I mean fair enough it'll take two coats of the gold which isn't a problem. Um, let's get my tissue. Um, and then it, it's a dry brush and then a shade. Uh, the other problem I've got is I'm actually running really low on my World Eater shade as well, uh, which is the colour I made up to uh, shade the white and the blue. And um, I had four pots and I'm on to my last one. So I'll have to be getting some more of that soon. It's a little bit harder making it now because Games Workshop pots aren't all the same size anymore. But I can figure it out, it's not a problem. So, let's get stuck in with this. 
Gonna go straight onto the gold. Now I don't have to be too neat with this, so I'm gonna use my grade two brush. And I'm saying I'm not gonna be very neat because it's gonna get dry brushed, it's gonna get painted over later. It's <sighs> blown bits off of it. And with this, you probably can't see because it's quite dark, but you will see the world eater symbol in a minute. Uh, I actually don't want to paint that gold. The actual jaws of the world eater, of the world eater symbol are red. So all I'm doing is painting the planet gold. Which is a bit weird because I actually thought I'd be painting it, but yeah, I don't know. It's fine. So yeah, I, I, I normally talk about my week. Um, I was off work. My first bit of holiday from my new job. Um, and uh, I what was it last was it last Tuesday that we had the club yeah I think it was because it, there was a funeral and so I, I recorded it might have been a week before do you know what I can't remember um, but I recorded my I recorded my video late last week because I just wasn't really in the mood to paint um, I, I, again I've I've been, I've been, I'm a bit hooked on World of Warcraft again, um, and people are badgering me about it and they're like stuff. But hey, it's my life. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I like. So okay, so that's the two planets done on that. I, I'll go back to them, I'll have to give them another coat in a bit. Um, so basically what I'm going to do now is try and catch some of the gold on the on the guns. See, my, this there's actually not any gold on the guns. I've planned this really, really well. As you can see, that's magnetised. So basically what I'm just going to have to do is wait for the gold to dry a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah. So... Yeah, it's been uh, an up and down week. Uh, I mean, I worked like I normally do Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, but as of this week, I go back to work an extra day. Um, so I'm going back to work on when on Thursday. So today's Tuesday. It's actually the sixteenth uh, today. Uh, so I go back uh, Thursday. So I've just got tomorrow for painting now. Um, I've been doing a lot of work on my Reaver Titan. Uh, it's it's slow going, but it's coming out. It's coming on. It's coming on slowly, but it's, it is coming on. Um, I started doing a, a video blog, so you can have a look at the video one up, and it should be the video the blog for the Reaver Titan. Um, it's basically it's just the case of I'm sitting at the end of the day and saying about what how, how what I've done. Um, I'm not specifically sitting in front of a camera actually doing any of it, but it's it's just basically so I can keep myself motivated to actually carry on doing it, um, which I don't think will be a problem because I'm actually quite enjoying uh, working on a, a model that size for um, building and stuff. Um, it's, it's a bit different it's like when you've got stuff that's just 28 mil which is the size of these marines um, and the details are small and everything it's just a bit it, it can get a bit lethargic sometimes you know and um, just having something that scale where you don't have to worry about Painting every um, every bit, every edge on the armor panels because it's such a massive thing that the really small details people aren't going to pick out very well. Um, and knowing me, I will probably go as far as painting every rivet on the Titan. Um, I actually haven't got any of the Titan here; it's all downstairs at the moment, so I can't show you parts of it. Uh, but the legs are, are almost all ready to be set, assembled. Um, some of the leg parts are assembled. Um, 
Right, so now what we're going to do, sorry, changing subjects, actually, there's some more bits I could have actually done on that. So let's go back to, yeah, let's go back to the gold. Just wasted some gold, but it's fine. Um, so I'm going to do some, some of the gold on the engine blocks and stuff. Um, yeah. Now these doors will be blue. There's actually not a lot of gold on the engine blocks, so I don't need a hell of a lot. Um, and yeah, I'm working on the bits and pieces because um, the tank is, like I say, I've got to leave it quite a while to dry because it had a lot of uh, shade put on it. So I probably have to leave it till quite late tonight to actually then get on it, but that's fine. Um, so we're going to go on the little exhaust ports and this uh, bit around the tube. It's going to be painted this bronze if it wants to stay on its uh, cork. So yeah, it's uh, the week's been a bit weird. Uh, we had a family party on, on Saturday. Uh, for my brother-in-law's 50th um, it's, um, now my family are all, are all aware of my um, my depression anxiety and stuff and as much as I, I I think to myself that I've pushed through it um, I, I really felt uh, I felt a bit uncomfortable at a party where I didn't really know many people. Like there was a few of my cousins there, and obviously I know my my family and that. But there was a lot of people I didn't know, and I I I just kind of kept myself to myself. I I was quietly in a corner. Um, so it's I'm not a, a party goer, shall we say? It's not my thing really. It's 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 a bit difficult when you're when you're a bit socially awkward and you're it's one of the things you're expected to go to because it's a family member's party and stuff and you just really don't feel like you fit there you know it's um yeah it didn't it it didn't feel too comfortable and I, no, I don't know whether my any of my family listen to these videos and stuff and I didn't I don't mean that in a nasty way or anything like that because they're all they're all life and soul of party they'll get up and talk to anyone and I just I at the moment I'm not in that comfort zone so I yeah I'm just a bit in my own head at the moment. So I, I'm aware it, it's coming up to um, it's coming up to about a year now that I was first um, first started seeking help for my depression and stuff um, and my anxiety. Um, and I want to talk about that a little bit. It's it's still there. I know it's still there, and it's probably going to always be there. But it's about how you manage it rather than how you beat it um, a lot of people were like oh yeah I beat my beat my depression and anxiety and it's I don't think it's about that it's about how you how you manage it how you cope with it how you live your life with it um, and yeah I mean there's there's been a lot of lot said cuz I think last one day last week was um uh world mental health day or whatever it is and sometimes stuff like that doesn't help because you then you get people like oh yeah they they jump on board if you know what I mean and it kind of distracts from the people that actually need the help um, now we all need a bit of help sometimes um, whether it's 
with socially awkward situations like parties or um, just meeting new people, that kind of thing. Um, and um, you've got um, sometimes it's a bit like you you get things things stand out. Now people don't mean any offence by it, but you read things into read into things that um, probably aren't there. But that's what anxiety does, and that's what depression does. Um, so it's it, sometimes it's you it's it's about managing it rather than beating it um, so yeah it's 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 awkward when when the people that not aren't that making you feel awkward the people that you're around are family um, and as much as they'll say to you oh you can talk to me about anything and don't feel like you're going to offend and stuff like that um, the anxiety makes you think that well you are being offensive and people will take offence because they'll, they'll remember it um, and it's uh, it's just like I said it's still there it's still um, part of me and may always be part of me. Um, but I think I'm managing a li managing it better, except for obviously awkward uh, social situations where I'm 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 terrible. I'm happy sitting in the corner talking to someone, except that everyone I spoke to was talking about. Uh, back to work and stuff like that so it's okay but what can you do so yeah so sometimes it's just a case of how you manage things how you manage your life rather than how you um, how you how can I put it like the hashtag for the the world um, mental health day or whatever it was was it's okay to not be okay um, and and that is totally true sometimes you're just things aren't right um, and it's a case of some people will insist that there's something wrong um, if you're not good you know and that's not always the case sometimes it's just a case of um, it's it you just want to be in a position where you're not uh, how should I say you you're not under pressure from other people to be who you're not um, just be yourself. I mean, f for me, myself on Saturday was sitting there and and having a, a drink. Um, the me in front of here is me sitting here painting. Um, which I, I said something to a friend yesterday, which I probably wasn't thinking properly when I actually said it. Was um, I said about how I'd, I'd at the moment. I want to be painting or building rather than uh, playing games and I, I know I could take stuff to the club and build it and, and paint painting might be awkward because it's you could end up making a mess and stuff like that generally speaking I wouldn't I mean I've been doing these for nearly a year now and I've not spilt paint once I don't spill paint generally um, as you see the pots are shut I don't knock pots over. Um, I think in the last ten years, maybe I've knocked one one pot of wash over. Um, it doesn't happen very often, so I could probably get away with painting one at the club. Um, so it's something I might think about in the next uh, maybe 
starting next year have a few painting sessions at the club but we'll see um, it's only really useful if other people join in so if it's me by myself then I might as well just be at home doing it so you know right so so we've done that on the gold what we need now is Dolly Griffin which is that one what's that one super more right okay don't worry about that so Golden Griffin's a dry brush. I'm probably rocking the camera with me shaking the pot. I don't know why I'm shaking a dry brush, a dry paint, but I did anyway. This is going to be awkward and not stay open. Or is it staying open? Yeah. See this pot, I can't spill. Dry paint, it doesn't spill. So you probably couldn't see that on camera, but there you go. Holding it over my Spartan, no problem not going to spill not a problem it does run a tiny tiny bit but nowhere near enough to actually spill on anything now i've got my uh, small dry brush from games workshop i'm just going to get some some paint and brush it off onto here i'm pretty sure you guys have seen me dry brush before and what we're going to do is this gold we're just going to dry brush across it I should say this is bronze really it's not a gold but you'll you'll see why I I, I paint like this because um, socrox bronze isn't a base coat it's it's a layer paint um, so pe some people have said to me why do I use layer paints as my base coat and and because you'll see why in a minute so the second door Again, what you want to do this from a, a number of angles, even just spin it around. You want to just catch all the raised details, leave the deep recesses as uh, the original color. You don't want to go press too hard to make it really, um, really deep. Uh, so I'm going to get some more golden griffin. I'm going to do some of this on the other gold parts that I've just painted. So we're going to go on here. As you can see, the blue's painted, which is probably a mistake because the dry brush will, it can get messy. But that's okay because I'm going to tidy up the blue in a minute anyway. And it's going to get a second layer. Now this blue and gold, uh, it stands out quite a lot. But, again, the way that I've painted this gold... Uh, it will tone it down a lot and it almost looks like a silver rather than a gold okay more brushing onto the I actually got some paint on the pat on the brush but that's sorted now again it's just some more dry brushing and you can be quite I wouldn't say be heavy with it um, but you can be quite um, you can do it all over that's what I meant all over the gold so what this will do it will raise it will catch the raised edges probably more and then it will um, not sit in the in the um, recesses and this the underside here again we're just gonna dry brush the gold and we're gonna go back for some more gold so this is basically this is basic this is a three stage uh, gold uh, way that I paint it the reason why I do it is it's quick um, it's not like with other gold that I've painted before, you do your base coat, your shade, then you do either one or two layers, then you glaze. And this is basically, it will be um, a base coat, a dry brush, and a glaze. And that's it. And that's the gold. So wash that brush off. And even though it's dry paint, you've still got to leave it to dry a little bit. So I'll just give it five minutes and I'll work on something else before then. In fact, 
I will actually stop the camera for a moment because uh, I've got to go and check something downstairs. Uh, so I will be right back. Right, so I'm back again. The paints are all dry now, so I can do my shades, but I'm actually going to work on the blue a little bit. I just thought I'd bring this upstairs because I'm working on my Revitine downstairs. Um, now, I've shown you this one. This is quite a big tank. I mean, when you compare it to, say, these pox walkers, these are the normal 20, 28 mil scale guys, right? So I get this stuff off the paint desk which is the aim for every painter stuff off the paint desk so I'm going to stick the spot next to this guy just get rid of that as well you can see like the pox walker you might not be able to see very, very well um, he's tiny compared to the Spartan right? and now I'm going to show you this is one of the guns for the Reaver Titan this is called a volcano cannon um, as you can see, you stick it on top of the spot and it's pretty big. So you get give you a scale of what the Reaver Titan is actually like. Um, I'm sure at some point in the future I'll be painting the Reaver Titan on bits of the Reaver Titan on here. Um, hopefully. But we'll see. Let's get rid of that pox walker again. He's not going to get painted for a while. Okay, so. Where are all the bits gone? That one and that one too. Cool. So I'm going to do some work on the blues. I actually got to uh, do the blue on the doors. Just shaking the cantor blue because we actually need to need to switch them over. But like I said, these cantor blues are, are running quite low. What I'm going to do. Seems to be a lot of sirens everywhere, but it's nothing new for around here to be quite honest. I'm gonna get a bit of some water with it. Just put some on the palette, and then we're gonna start painting the door, the blue on the doors. It's just that when I paint the blue, um, it's two layers of cancel blue, two layers of techless blue, and then it gets shaded with the the blue shade that I do but the gold gets sh shaded as well so it makes sense to do it all in one go so what, we, what I'm going to do is grab out number two brush again and uh, start painting the blue on the doors now, I've been getting a little bit of pressure from people to get this Spartan painted um, I've had it for quite a while and I've used it in games fairly quite a bit as well and uh, one of one of the guys at the club bought a Spartan recently and got it painted in the space of a day and day and a half I think um, so I thought yeah why not I use it a lot because it's a good transport vehicle to get Angron and my Red Butchers into combat um, it's quite tough to crack it's uh, it can keep going a lot of the time without being stopped, and it will it will hold everyone in that tank very securely. So yeah, it's um, it's it's a it's a nice reliable way of transporting your Primark and your uh, elite combat troops across the board. Um, which I've actually got a game next week of 30k and uh, probably the week after as well um, and uh, I may not be using the Spartan for a change um, I've got a bit bored of the army build that I use and in a way it's, I'm, I'm kind of limited to what I've actually owned anyway um, what I own and what's built and painted um, so I've I've lit I'm, I'm kind of limited to what I, I can use um, so this is why I'm actually painting some world eaters now because it'd be nice to actually have something different I can use so I'm probably gonna bring Khan uh, next Monday Khan is the um, 
the actual captain of my company from my world eaters and he actually hasn't been used how he should be used yet but for the campaign that we're running at the club in starting next month uh khan is going to be my my main character and um he should be in most of my army builds uh, it, it will mean that angron gets put to one side and doesn't get used very often um, but that's fine it means I could bring a, a, a different Lord of War instead which will be my glaive uh, which a lot of people are quite terrified of, at glaives um, my, my glaive is a super heavy tank uh, it puts the Spartan it makes the Spartan look tiny um, so I'm, I'm jumping onto the second door now again these will need two coats um, so I'm just doing the first layer and then I'll go back and I'll tidy up that gold on the blue that I've done before and then I'll do the second coat um, but yeah so the glaive it's it's got this weird weapon it fires a long beam and it can hit a lot of targets uh, so it's um, yeah it's 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 a, a very powerful super heavy tank uh, but it is a big target and it can get killed so we'll see I haven't had a lot of success with the glaive uh, I know other people have but generally speaking I haven't um, it just always seems to me it's quite a, a, a brutal um, aggressive tank so it kind of fits my army, it fits the world eaters quite well. Um, and I've had some success with it, but not, not loads. Um, I never seem to blow up vehicles with it, but I've munched troops. I've racked up kills of troops, so... And that tank needs finishing as well, so... Like I said, it doesn't get used very much because I generally bring Angron as my Lord of War instead. Uh, he just seems to be a lot more reliable in his damage output. Uh, obviously dies all the time, Angron does, but not before he's normally won his points back. The Glaive I find a lot harder to actually... When you're, when you're playing 30k... Um, you could be happy with a unit if they've generally killed more than their their points are. Um, with Glaive, it's difficult. It's 600 odd points. Um, there's some tanks that can fire it and stop it shooting, uh, they're, but they're 30k tanks, and uh, I don't own any of them. Other people have. That stops it shooting. If that's the case, then I'm quite likely to thunder blitz with it, which it makes it uh, steam forward and basically run stuff over. And being a tank of that size, running stuff over is uh, a bit painful. So, yeah, but we'll see. Again, like I said, I'm just tidying up the gold that I dry brushed onto these bits. Still seems to be a hell of a lot of uh, sirens flying around. And like I said, West London, there's always sirens everywhere. And uh, just cleaning up on this engine block as well. Okay, Ooh, I'm falling over. Right, so the first door is dry enough, so I can actually go straight back onto it and do a second coat. Um, see, it's a bit disconcerting, like when you hear all these sirens like this. I don't, I don't know how much it's picking up on camera. Um, 
with the stuff that's happened in the past few years like the terrorist attacks and stuff like that like hearing sirens all the time and you you start expecting the worst like it doesn't help when you've got anxiety and stuff as well but you kind of expect bad things when you hear so many sirens and you should I know I probably shouldn't and whatever but you can't help yourself sometimes. So yeah, so like I, was, I think I was saying before, I haven't been doing a lot of painting because I've been kind of hooked on World of Warcraft. Um, uh, so do you know what? I'm, I, I could talk about that for a little while. Um, so if you haven't played World of Warcraft, it's an MMO, uh, massively multiplayer online game um, I, I've played it I started playing it the week it was released and it got released in 2004 so it's an old game it's 14 years old um, it's still as engrossing as it was but no it's not as engrossing as it was I used to feel like I've achieved something quite big when I've leveled up a character in, in Old World of Warcraft in the original version because it used to be a real challenge like and I, I was thinking this the other day I'm going through dungeons and I'm just grabbing as many of the ca uh, mobs that I can and doing one air of effect attack and just wipe them out um, my main character I'm playing at the moment is a war human warrior so I'm going through um, lower level dungeons and just getting achievements for completing them. Um, now, back in the old, it's called called Vanilla, which is the original version of World of Warcraft. Um, even going through lower level dungeons, you would have struggled. I mean, I remember going through a level twenty dungeon as a level. 40 or 50 paladin and I really struggled um, but now it's it's quite simple um, and in some ways it's taken away from the game I understand that it's got more people into it because it's not a hard thing but so, like with the, with the painting and stuff it's not I mean you can sit down and paint and like anyone can um, some people will be um, reluctant because of the effort it takes. Um, some people will get put off because they just they can't get the results that they want to make the models look like they want. Um, and with World of Warcraft, it's a bit like. Um, it's a bit like you are getting models done to a standard and then you just having to like finish the last bits of them um, at the moment. That's what it feels like. Uh, and part of the reason why I I enjoy playing it is the storyline. I've always loved the World, World of Warcraft uh, lore. Uh, back from when I was playing it as a kid when it was World War, uh, just Warcraft, Warcraft 1, 2 and 3, um, right so that's the blue done, I keep going off on tangents I know but it's a, it's a distraction from painting um, and in a way it's good, in another way it's not so good because the painting is, is good for me sitting in front of a laptop probably isn't but sometimes I'm just not in the mood for painting so I'm still having the problem of um, having to clear my desk every time that I want to paint and as much as that doesn't sound like a lot it's that little bit of resistance where you can think oh do you know what I don't need to do that um, so I, I want to try and make it so it's as easy for me to just sit and paint as anything else so I could literally just sit straight on my desk and get stuck in um, 
but we'll have to see. Um, I need I need to have a big sort out of my room again. I've I just I hoard everything. I've accumulated so much stuff over the years, and it's just it's got a little bit out of hand. Right, what I actually need is my medium. Yeah. So putting a little bit of medium into the blue. Um, so basically, just grab a brush of it like that. And this is my brush is still tainted with a bit of blue, but that's fine. Uh, and we're going to grab some blue, add it to the medium, just to thin it down, because I don't want to use water. I want it to be a bit more consistent than that. So that'll do. Nice puddle in the in the palette. Now we're going to start covering this dark blue over with a lighter blue. Um, we're not going to cover it fully because I want to leave some of the dark blue showing. I mean, you'll see what I mean. I'm hoping to get this done before I finish my video today, uh, but there's no guarantees. Uh, yeah, let's get. So we've got a great zero brush, and I'm going to start. Just start with these little engine blocks. The um, uh, exhaust. Just basically cover the blue with a lighter blue. See, I'm not too worried at the moment about the little um, rivets uh, because once I've uh, shaded these or glazed them, sorry, um, the rivets will then get painted silver anyway. So, and the the shade will pick up as a recess. Uh, pick up the shading around the but the rivets, so it will be fine. And it does. This blue is quite light. Um, it'll just just darken it up enough. And there's all them sirens again. For all I know, something really big could be happening, but I don't know just seems to always be sirens around now um, sirens and street races every night we get street races uh, blasting down the motorway because basically where I live we've got a, a golf course across the road uh, behind the houses that are across the road um, and to the other side of the golf course you've got the motorway and uh, yeah, you can hear them race them uh, street races which is uh, quite annoying especially when it's like two or three o'clock in the morning obviously people don't really care about other people anymore so you know right, so that's them two done we're gonna do a bit on this engine block now with this when I when I actually cleaned this this uh, Spartan up a few years ago now, um, didn't realise how badly damaged some bits of this was, and uh, fortunately, they're not bits that will be shown too much. So I'm just going to crack on with it. Again, this will this will need a second coat, but I probably won't have time to get to that today or on here anyway I'm planning to carry on painting after I've finished the video but I also need to do a, a blog update for my Reva um, which to be fair there hasn't been a lot of progress on it today uh, except for cleaning the parts um, I've got another batch in soak because like this it's resin uh, the Reva Titan and um, you really need to scrub resin before you actually start applying paint to it and even sometimes glue sometimes glue won't stick on the uh, on the resin um, so yeah because it, cause it's quite a big model as well the Reva Titan well when I say quite big it's huge um, 
I bought a washing up brush. I used that to scrub it, and I've got a toothbrush as well, which is what I normally use for scrubbing resin. There's a nice big mold line right there. I'm so glad that that won't be seen. But there we go. I actually sound out there just round the corner of them sirens as well, but not just round the corner, just up the road. But I'll have to go for a walk later and uh, get some shopping. As long as the rain holds off, I'm not going out if it's raining. I can't be bothered with getting soaked. I can cook myself some dinner. I don't know what I'm having for dinner. I'm quite a self-sufficient guy, even though I've, I live at home with my parents. Um, I know people would be people would be saying, "Well, I'm 37 now. Yeah, I should be self-sufficient." Um, but you should be surprised how many people aren't at my age. Um, it was weird actually because um, at the weekend like there's one thing I, I haven't really done um, and that's iron my own shirts um, but I did that at the weekend first time and I'm 37 I should have ironed my own shirts by now but I did do that at the weekend so that's the only one thing that I kind of never did for myself um, I don't really iron well I don't iron I never have ironed um, but I'm not that fashion conscious that I'm worried about how my clothes look like I'm sitting here in tracky bottoms and a t-shirt I don't care My when I go to the club I'm in jeans and a t-shirt I'm not fashion conscious at all but so yeah, doing my own shirt is a bit weird, but it's easy enough. So yeah, this is uh, it's quite easy to do this one. Um, it's just painting in the vents as well because it's quite a big engine block. The you can actually I can put the blue in the vents. Um, like I said, it will get a second coat. Probably not on camera today, but it will get a second coat a bit later. And I'm hoping a couple of days work and I get this spot and finished. Now the thing that's been putting me off actually painting this is the amount of sponging that I'm going to have to do on it. Um, firstly, I've got to find some sponge. I know I've got a bit there, but I've not got much else. I've got some in a bag somewhere, but I've got to find it. Um, and uh, yeah, it should be. Um, it should take me quite a while to sponge the white onto that tank. It is a big tank. I mean, I've done it on that that guy, and I like how the white's come out. I know it's nice. It's very clean. It's um, not very worldy alike, but it's how I like my world is to look um, and I, I always said I, I would give them uh, blood splatter and all that once they've had battles but I'm quite content to not like the thing is with world eaters they're they're a butcher horde they're um, very aggressive they coat themselves in their enemy's blood that kind of thing um, but I always wanted mine to be the uh, fresh troops the, the, the newly deployed guys the guys that haven't seen combat yet and um, so when they're not in combat they're the same as every other space marine they're um, well at this stage in their history anyway they would scrub their armour they would um clean their bolters, that kind of thing. Um, 
So that's the, the World Eater Legion that I wanted my army to represent because no one does that. Everyone else who's painted World Eaters that I've seen um, have them covered in blood and gore and and battle damage and stuff like that. And I was just like that wasn't that isn't my paint style to do that. So I just didn't. Um, now I could do that further down the line because this is how I would do battle damage. I would um, get get a model fully painted to a nice clean stage and then battle damage and weather it up afterwards. Um, but I'm quite content with not because I think my world eaters stand out quite a lot because of their cleanliness, shall we say? The OCD uh, world eaters. That's not making fun of OCD because I know it's a bit of a pain, but yeah. Oh, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Further down the line, we'll see. Because I know of two people. Um, well, I know of one other person who's played world eaters. I've, that I've met in person and his army was very uh, battle worn and stuff like that and I just I didn't like the look of that so yeah and it's fine for him he could do it, do his army however he likes um, he, I, I'm pretty sure he won't watch this um, but for me again I'll do my army how I like so I am so we're actually running out on time on my hour today. Um, I know I've rambled about this, that, and everything. Uh, we've had sirens and we've had loud noises and stuff like that and whatever. But we also had some painting done. Um, like I said, this tank's been sitting uh, undercoated white for about a year now. Um, I've used it in games. Uh, I've had good experiences with it so it's getting painted I mean I played two games at the club last night um, or yesterday they, they, they were intro games of 40k and I took a list I took lists that I didn't think would be mega powerful I was I was Cal Space Marines they're generally thought of as not a mega powerful army um, there are things that you can do to make them powerful like every other army but I didn't do any of that um, so I, I took a I, I wouldn't say a dumbed down army but I took not a optimal army um, I did win both games though unfortunately but sometimes the luck of the dice are the luck of the dice and I think they're paying me back for the Blood Bowl game that I played the other week where I was absolutely my dice rolling was the worst dice rolling I've ever had in a game but the guy that I played last week uh, played a game uh, last night as well Blood Bowl and uh, the guy also had really terrible luck so I'm wondering whether he's uh, just a bad luck guy I don't know But yeah, the, the Blood Bowl League, the first league, is coming to its end now. Um, I would say probably 50% of the players have played all, all five of their games. Um, one guy's won all five. He's quite clearly at the top of the league. This is the guy that I played last week and had really bad luck against. Um, and I, I actually need to do the league table today. Because I want to get it done and, and up. See, I, I, I find with stuff like that, I mean, I could put it off till Wednesday or even Thursday, but it's it's only t five or ten minutes work, and I'll just get it done and it's done. I mean, you'll see with the um, sit and talk, the little intro thing that I've done, um, which now has music to it as well. Um, 
I was look, looking into what music I could use on YouTube. Um, found that the uh, list is really limited. Um, like I couldn't use, say, a Metallica song or an Auto Bridge song or anything like that. Um, which is annoying, but that's copyright for you. Um, so I found something that was quite nice, like nice for me. I, I like my heavy, my rock music. There's a bit of guitar music and that. So I yeah, I thought I'd use that. And I found another one which I quite like for the for the clubs. Uh, page which I put up the tester video for the battle report I filmed um, and it got quite good people seem to like it so let's stick with that music for the club as well I'll be looking into getting other people to help with uh, videos and stuff like that um, eventually hopefully um, and like I want other people to contribute to it as well not just be me because having me on camera all the time will get boring not that I'm on camera I'm actually behind the camera but you know um, I've got to sort out my um, what do you call it my cameramanship you know what I mean how I how I hold the camera how I actually um, am on camera that kind of thing I need to need to improve that a little bit but that's just something I think that will come with time um, I, I need to get an, another memory card and uh, a battery as well for the camera because uh, the battle report I think is about an hour and a half and uh, I was having to charge the camera up and it would just be easier if I could just switch the battery out. Uh, the memory was fine um, but it would be nice to have a backup just in case. Again, that mould line's there on the exact opposite side, but like I said, it should be covered up by a, a connector, a join in the model. So, so this is I'm getting quite close to my hour. I think I'm actually past the hour, but it's fine. Um, there are a few bits and pieces I've got to do before I carry on painting today. Obviously, upload, uh, render this video. It'll upload during the night, I would think. Generally, my videos do now. Um, one thing I, I didn't actually say is I I hit my 201 models for the year. Um, after my painting session last Tuesday, I carried it on. Uh, I got them two rampages done. Was that last Tuesday? I, you know, I can't remember. Um, but I've got them done. So I'm on 201 models painted for the year now. Um, so I hit my target. I've now got starting to think of. Uh, I've got two other little targets that I set myself. So that's the the uh, engine thing done. First layers anyway. Um, the three large scale models, which will be the Reaver Titan, hopefully, the uh, Lord of Skulls, and um, probably the Glaive for these guys, and then a small force for a, a, a non Games Workshop game, which I'm looking at Star Trek Attack Wing. I've been looking at it for a while and I've not really bothered. And now that they've started selling the models uh, unpainted, I'm actually quite interested. I quite quite like the idea of painting some Klingon models, ships, or some Federation ships. But I've got to find a way to get hold of the rules and everything first. But I'm going to end the video there today. Uh, I've done a little bit, you know, my slow painting. I'll put some music on and I'll get 
painting some more once I'm uploading this. Again, thank you very much for listening and for watching. Uh, I'm a big friendly wargamer. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.